weighing in at more than 400,000 pounds and with a length in excess of 80 feet and a massive 5,000 horsepower prime mover, the SD80 Mac is one of the heaviest, longest, and most powerful single diesel locomotives in the world. Conrail was the first railroad to receive the SD80 Mac in early 1996. As it would turn out, Conrail would be the only original buyer of this locomotive, even purchasing both of the demonstrator units. I'm Railfan AC, and you're watching Trains in the 21st Century. In January 1996, Conrail added a new breed of diesel locomotive to their roster, the AC Traction 5000 horsepower EMD SD80 Mac. It was the first model to use a 20-cylinder prime mover since the SD45s of more than 20 years earlier and Conrail's first and only independent order for AC locomotive power. EMD built and Juniata completed 28 of the 80 foot long monsters for use on heavy trains on the Pittsburgh line and the Boston line. Only 30 were built and all went to Conrail and most still exist today on Norfolk Southern. CSX inherited about 13 when Conrail was split but a trade agreement between them and the Norfolk Southern saw ex-Conrail SD40s exchanged for the SD80 Max in early 2015. The former Conrail ex Norfolk Southern SD40s ran around on CSX in their black paint with yellow CSX markings, which earned them the nickname of the Black Hornets. The 80s were considered to be somewhat rare, and although they could show up anywhere, they were typically only seen in certain parts of the NS system. The SD45 series had a false rep for being fuel hogs, however, the SD80 Max 20 cylinder 710G3B has electronic fuel injection for increased efficiency and reduced emissions. The 80 Mac also makes use of the self steering HTCR2 radial truck with large 45 inch wheels as opposed to the 40 inch wheels found on the SD60i. But like the SD60i, the 80 has flange lubricators for high adhesion and low rail wear. The SD45 was actually quite a successful model for EMD despite the fact that many had reliability issues with crankshafts snapping while in operation. Once the company was able to correct these problems by redesigning the locomotive's engine block, the SD45 proved to be a reliable and powerful locomotive that can still be found in use all across the country today. As for the SD80 Mac, it never did suffer from any reliability issues in terms of a problematic engine.
The SD80 Max were the most advanced locomotives to hit the road when they were built. Conrail was a leader in this regard, not just in trying out new things, but making them standard on new orders. First with the isolated cab, first with the electronic fuel injection, first with the electronic cab signaling, jointly developed with Harman Electronics, of course, first with the electronic air brake, and first with the integrated displays. The most important and probably expensive feature of the SD80 Max were the alternating current AC traction motors which created adhesion of 35%. Like the SD60i, the 80 has the isolated cab to improve crew comfort and integrated cab electronics. The 80 Max were also equipped with distributed power but it has rarely ever been used. During the 1990s, the advent of AC traction and the increase in available adhesion and starting tractive effort kicked off a new horsepower race as GE and EMD sought to take advantage of the untapped potential of AC systems capable of handling more horsepower than existing locomotives could deliver. EMD revived their 20-cylinder engine fad and took the lead ahead of GE in 1995 with the introduction of the SD80 Mac. Conrail was so impressed with the 80s that they purchased the two demonstrators, the EMDX numbers 8000 and 8001, outright. There were to be 108 more AC locomotives ordered, but things were scaled back to 28 more 80 Max to be delivered in early 1997. The split by CSX and NS put an end to any additional orders for the 80s and instead 15 SD70 Max were ordered for CSX and 24 standard cab DC traction SD70s were ordered for NS. All 39 locomotives were built at Juniata. And now that they've served their new owners much longer than they served Conrail, the SD80 Max remain one of the most followed group of locomotives among rail fans in the East. The SD70 Mac was one of the most commercially successful mass-produced models of a single-engine AC traction diesel locomotive produced for the North American locomotive market. And after its initial success in 1993, EMD opted to avoid losing completely to GE's dominant AC4400 CW by introducing the SD80 Mac and the SD90 Mac. This was the start of a second horsepower race and EMD beat GE to the punch with higher horsepower locomotives. The 80 Mac was a similar sister to the SD70 line except for its increased horsepower, much longer than any single locomotive EMD had made aside from their DD series. The model did have some noticeable design changes from the 70 series engines, those aside from the increased length. The model was the first EMD locomotive to feature the flared rear radiator design that had been a common trait of GM and GE diesels dating back to the 1970s with the GM's SD45 and the GE's Dash 7 line. It was touted that two 5,000 horsepower 80 Max could outnumber a trio of GE AC 4400s because of the advantage of having a higher horsepower rating. Furthermore, EMD touted that three SD70 Max were capable of replacing five DC traction SD40 2s. This further boosted sales of the model that was already popular with the Burlington Northern, who was receiving the last of their 350 plus SD70 Max from a 1993 order. Although successful, the 80 Mac didn't get many orders because it was more expensive to build and maintain because of its advanced and confusing control systems. Add to that, it had less horsepower than its SD90 counterpart. Chicago and Northwestern and the Canadian Pacific both had intended to order the 80s. The CNW was planning on 15 units to complement their existing AC4400 CW fleet and further replacing the existing SD60s on coal trains in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming. But because of the UP takeover in 1995 and the demonstrations of the SD90 Max on the Canadian Pacific being more successful, the order was canceled and Conrail remained the only 80 Mac customer. From 2011 to 2012, Vale Mining of Brazil acquired seven mechanically similar Tier 1 compliant 20-cylinder 710G3C ES-equipped SD80 ACE units and all are built for use on broad gauge 5 foot 3 inch trackage. Said units are currently available for export only for they violate current EPA emission restrictions regarding new locomotives built beginning in 2014. Today 29 of the 30 80 Max are still around with one having been scrapped after a derailment. Norfolk Southern removed the marker lights from the original 80 Max that they acquired during the Conrail split. CSX kept the marker lights on their units. After NS acquired the remaining 80 Max from CSX, they removed the red marker lights from those units. NS had initially restricted the 80 Max to coal service between Altoona, the South Fork Secondary, Helper Service, and Shire Oaks in Western Pennsylvania. 
but with declining coal shipments, many got out on the road. In 2018, after NS finished rebuilding its 90 Mac fleet into SD-70 ACUs, it was supposed to rebuild all 80 Macs into SD-80 ACUs, but the project was canceled. With all existing 80 Macs now under one banner, NS has placed the 80s into storage and all are being auctioned off. The SD-80 Macs are in a class by themselves and hopefully they can find a buyer and maybe even get a new lease on life. Maybe even a rebuild as was the plan. The 90s had a crazy recovery thanks to the ACU rebuilding program that we talked about in video T29 and GE is working with Larry's Truck and Electric, I call it Latex, to rebuild C40-8s for regionals as we discussed in video T155. So the question that now becomes is, how oddball are the 80s and would a short line or a regional or maybe a smaller class 1, here's looking at you KCS, have the need and the shop forces to maintain a pool of AC powered heavy duty freight haulers. Only time will tell.